In the previous video, I showed you some of the techniques I like to use to model my assets quickly and efficiently. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the arch bridges and also some interesting ways in which you can use the boolean modifier. Hi, my name is Ken Liang and welcome to how to make a Dark Souls boss room. Before I begin, I want to quickly readjust the height of this edge as I didn't account for the libraries in the second floor during the blocking phase. Now, add a cube and move it slightly to the right of the statue. Scale it down narrower and then up the length until they extend outside the scene. Add two edge loops and increase the distance between them until they are almost touching the cylinder's inner walls from the top view. Move it up and then edit to make the bottom vertices touch the ground. Let's switch to the wireframe mode and try to match the position more accurately to our reference artwork. Align the newly created edge loop to the one in the background image on the x-axis. Then, adjust the height of the bridge until it matches the underside of the bridge in the reference, and extrude the top faces until they match the level of the top side too. Delete these faces in the middle, and fill back the missing faces to bridge both sides of the edges. Add the bevel modifier and set it to affect the weight. Then select the two edges at the corners here and set their mean bevel weight value to 1. Increase the number of segments and offset the bevel distance to roughly match the one in the reference. You can tweak the bridge here if they are slightly off by moving them along the y-axis. Enable Shade Smooth and Auto Smooth Normals. To make the hole for the passageway, Add the cube and move it to the top of the bridge. Scale it down to match the size of the passageway. Don't forget to apply its scale if you didn't edit the mesh in edit mode. Now move it along the y-axis until it is intersecting with the wall. To make the hole, simply select the wall and add the boolean modifier, then pick the cube object. Change the display for the cube to show wire so that we can see clearly what's going on. Sometimes you get a bug like this where the boolean operation isn't working as intended. To remedy this, try giving the wall a little bit of thickness with the solidify modifier. It is important to arrange the order so that the solidify operation is applied first before the boolean. Now we can see the hole in the wall. Let's continue with the cutter object. To make it rounded at the top, use the bevel modifier on the two edges at the top with weight, just like we did with the bridge. I am going to duplicate this object to make the arch around the opening, so let's rename it first. After duplicating the mesh, switch it back to show texture and give it a name too. We can hide the cutter object for now. Select the object and delete the faces on both ends. Add a solidify modifier and adjust the thickness to your liking.
I want it to look like it is following the contour of the wall, so I'll use a cube and cut it with a boolean modifier too. I've tried editing the mesh by moving the vertices at the side nearer to the wall, but the solidify modifier gives me a weird looking result. I prefer a cleaner cut with the boolean. Parent the boolean cutter objects to the arch and create a new collection for them. In the future, all cutter objects can be moved into the same collection so that you can toggle their visibility easily. Let's make the other arch by duplicating the existing one and move it up until it aligns with the top of the wall. Rotate it 90 degrees and match the position to the reference artwork again. Once the far end is correctly aligned, move the 3D cursor there and rotate the bridge along the Z-axis to match the other end too. You can tell by keeping an eye on the alignments along the bridge here. When they are parallel, adjust the position of the end by moving them along its local Y-axis. Finish it off by pulling the vertices at the bottom all the way down to the ground. To create the damage on our bridge, add in a new cube and place it over the bridge around here. Add a subdivision modifier to give it more mesh density and choose simple to retain the cube's shape. Then, add a displace modifier and create a new texture. Lower down the strength and choose cloud for the texture type. Adjust the size of the texture and enable smooth shading. Also, change it to display as wire because this will be used as a cutter object. Rename the objects accordingly and parent them together. We can now boolean the bridge with the cutter object. If you want to, you can rotate the cutter object to get a different result that you like. When you are done, select both objects and duplicate them. Move them down to the ground level and invert the boolean by changing it to intersect. Position the fallen bridge at an interesting angle. It doesn't matter if it overlaps the ground, because it is placed so far away from the camera, and we may have other objects obscuring it later on. In the next video, we will assemble the scene with all the assets we've made previously. Thank you for watching, save your file, and I'll see you in the next video.